for your joy and pain but I'll be loving you always as the day I know I'm living but tomorrow could make me the past but that I mustn't fear for I'll know deep in my mind the love of me I left behind cause I'll Testing, testing, one, two, one, two. Zoom again, one, two, one, two.
mighty God up above, please look down and see my people through. Go. God Almighty, God above, please look down and see my people through. I Just clouds passing by. He'll give peace and comfort to every trouble. Yesterday. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours. Oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure. Oh, glory. 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 Oh. the 
heavens, no man, no weapon. Formed against, yes, glory is destined. Everyday women and men become legends. Sins that go against our skin become blessings. The movement is a rhythm to us. Freedom is like religion to us. Justice is juxtaposition in us. Justice for all just ain't specific enough. One son died, the spirit is revisiting us. True and living, living in us. Resistance is us. That's why Rosa sat on the bus. That's why we walk through Ferguson with our hands up. When it go down, we woman and man up. They say stay down and we stand up. Shots, we on the ground. The camera panned up. King pointed to the mountaintop and we ran up. One day. When the glory comes, it will be ours, it will be ours, oh, one day, when the war is won, we will be sure, we will be sure, oh, no, glory, glory, oh. man, woman, and child. Even Jesus got his crown in front of a crowd. They march with the torch. We gon' run with it now. Never look back. We done gone hundreds of miles from dark roads, heroes to become a hero. Facing the league of justice, his power was the people. Enemy is lethal. A king became regal. Saw the face of Jim Crow under a bald ego. The biggest weapon. It's to stay peaceful, we sing. Our music is the cuts that we bleed through. Somewhere in the dream we had an epiphany. Now we right the wrongs in history. No one can win a war individually. It take the wisdom of the elders and young people's energy. Welcome to the story we call victory. The coming of the Lord, my eyes have seen the glory. One day, when the glory comes, it will be ours. Good afternoon, good afternoon. If I can have your attention, please. Good afternoon. We will have a word of prayer over the food. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you this afternoon, thanking you for a beautiful day, Lord, when we never seen and we'll never see again, Lord. We thank you for the season of fall. So, Lord, as we come together, we ask that you have blessings, so you bless the food and make it nourishment for our bodies. Bless the hands that prepared it. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Bon Appetit. If you would go out the doors to the side, please. To my right and your left. We have food on one side and drinks on the other. Drop 
presence flood the earth Cause it's overflowing in heaven Let your servants rise on earth Cause they're never weary in heaven Let your healing fall on earth Cause ain't nobody sick up in heaven Let your praises be found on earth Cause they always resound in heaven let the choir sing on earth Let your will be done Let your justice reign on earth Just like it rains in heaven Let your mercy cover the earth Cause it's running over in heaven Let your love conquer the earth Cause it already governs the heavens Let revival come on earth Cause it's every day up in heaven Let your choir sing on earth
I'd like to do another number for you right now. Taken from the same album. It's an idea that I hope we all can share in.
give my band a big round of applause?
trouble the water Who's that yonder dressed in red Waiting in the water Must be the children that Moses led God's gonna trouble the water Waiting Yonder dressed in white Waiting the water Must be the children of the Israelite Oh, God's gonna trouble the water Waiting the water Waiting the water Children waiting In the water
Good afternoon, good afternoon, and welcome to all. I am Robin Upshur Fields, Vice President of our prestigious Fauquier County NAACP Branch 7059 under the leadership of President Conway Porter. As Vice President, yes, let's give him a round of applause. Yes. Yeah. He deserves all that and more. As Vice President, I extend a warm and friendly greeting to all of you who are physically present and those of you who have joined us online. We are so excited you've joined us on our first hybrid 68th Freedom Fund Banquet, God is Good. We need to clap on that too. COVID has not kept us down. I am also the lead of our membership committee. I would ask Marsha to stand, please. Okay, Marsha, she's in a beautiful blue top, is my right-hand person. Without your membership, donations, participation, and support, today would not be possible. That's Marsha at the door right there. <laughs> <laughs> membership is the bloodline to this organization. We extend a heartfelt welcome because many before us paved the way so we could celebrate this joyous occasion today. So we hope you will hear something that inspires you to join us as we continue to seek justice and honor the mission of the NAACP. Now sit back and enjoy our 68th Freedom Fund Banquet. Welcome, welcome, welcome. So now join us as Senior Pastor Vincent Holland of Shiloh Baptist Church, Woodville, Virginia, gives us the invocation, Pastor Holland.
Good afternoon. If you would, pray with me. Lord, we ask you to help us to pray. Father God in heaven, first we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for this opportunity, Father God, to gather with those who you've called to service. We ask now, Father God, as we go into this program, Father God, that you will remind each and every one of them that the service is not in vain. That you, Father God, are touching each and every one of them every day of their life and you're guiding them. If they would just listen to your still small voice to go into this service, Lord, we just ask that you continue to guide their footsteps and their path and let them know that they stand on the shoulders of giants, and Father God, and one day somebody will stand on their shoulders too. So we ask you, Father God, to just uh, keep this thing as you would have it to be, beyond anything we can understand, beyond anything we know, because the works we do today, Father God, pay dividends for future generations. And we thank you, Lord, for these folks who have volunteered, and we ask now that your spirit settle on us and dwell with us each and every day. This we ask and this we pray in the mighty name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Harlan. At uh, this time, I want to ask uh, Greg Crown to come forward from the vigil and good afternoon. Uh, my name is Greg Crown, and this today is Reformation Sunday in my church, and that's why we were all in red. And our service today. There was a little paragraph read, and I shared it with my, my friend, Reverend Holland, and he said this needs to be spread. So I'm going to read it to you, and I hope you get something out of it. <clears throat> this life, therefore, is not righteousness, but growth in righteousness. Not health, but healing. Not being, but becoming. Not rest, but exercise. We are not yet what we shall be, but we are growing toward it. The process is not yet finished but it is going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. All does not yet gleam in glory, but all is being purified. I'm told that I'm not close to the mic, I guess. Uh, yeah, let me... Okay, thank you, uh, Reverend Holland, and 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 okay, and Brother Crown. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. It's uh, like uh, our Vice President said. It's a delight to be back live one more time. Uh, we've been three uh, three years in our basements or on Zoom or wherever we were. Uh, but it's it's a delight to be here touching and seeing and agreeing and just have fellowship. So it's uh, I'm Conway Porter, if you haven't guessed already. It's my honor to serve as president of the Fauquier County branch of the NAACP, the biggest, the baddest, the most loved, the most hate, most revered, and the most feared uh, civil rights organization in this country. So um, this time I want to kind of take a moment to sil silence your cell phones, if you would. Um, I think Jesus will leave a message. If, if you're in Zoom, please mute yourself, okay? Now, before we proceed, let us take a moment to recognize our special guests joining us this afternoon. That doesn't mean that you're not special, but we have some special guests and we want to recognize them. Um, we have a heartfelt thanks to each of each one of you to, for being here and would ask uh, that you want to call your name or organization that you just wave, let us know where you are, okay? We have with us, glad to, glad to have with us, Fauquier County Sheriff 
Jeremy Falls. Where are your shirt falls? The town of Warrington Mayor, Carter Neville. Carter Neville? Yeah. Um, and this is this is a um, an election year, as every year is in the state of Virginia. And so I'm maybe I'm not I'm preaching to the choir. I hope I'm preaching to the choir to tell you that vote, please, please vote. Okay. And to wit, we have several people here that are running for office here in this uh, in the county. Uh, we have Jason Ford, who is running for District 28, Senate seat. If Ike Broaddus, who is running for supervisor of that district. Larry Jackson, running for the Virginia Delegate, House of Delegates, 61. The, uh, is Mr. Vance here? Oh, Rob Vance, okay. He's running for Senate District 30. And uh, now we have some um, we have some clergy here that I want to recognize. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Raheed, Raheed Ibrahim. Run for our Center District um, Supervisor here in Fauquier. Amen. Did I miss anybody? I didn't miss anybody. Oh, God. Well, oh. How could I miss Duke? Damn. Our own Duke Plan, uh, Raymond Duke Plan, uh, senior, is running for school board in Marshall District. We do have a uh, clergy with us, and I want to recognize uh, my pastor, um, Reverend Leonard Morton, senior, Poplar Fork Baptist Church. Reverend Herman Nelson, Shiloh Middlebird. Where are you? Reverend Alfred Woods, First Baptist Church in Front Royal. And uh, Scott Christian, uh, he's the head of the, vig of the vigil. I want to recognize Scott. And we do have uh, one other branch uh, that's recognized that's with us today. Uh, we have some rep representatives from uh, the Warren Page uh, branch. Uh, would you raise your hand back there, Ms. Vida and Janet? Are there any other special people in the house? You're all special. I ain't lying. You're all special. Uh, but we wanted to, to point those in. We're going to recognize some other people here later. Uh, our evening continues with a delightful musical selection performed by the incredibly talented Mike Parker a Fauquier County native and graduate of Kettle Run High School. Any Kettle Run people here? Hey. He's a former top 10 American Idol contestant. Mike is currently living in Nashville, Tennessee, pursuing his musical career. And we're so delighted to have him back here in Fauquier County this afternoon to share his music with us. Please give a warm welcome for Mike Parker. Oh. 
are we doing in this afternoon? How you guys doing? That's good. All right, here we go. Oh, man, my name is Mike Parker. Um, thank you guys so much for having me out here today. It is, uh, it's an honor to get to do what I have been called to do by God and um, go out into the world and figure it out and then bring it back, back here where I was born and raised. And, um, you know, I'm, it, growing up black in Fauquier County is very interesting. Um, but it, it, it's it's uh, inspiring to see um, people like my father um, sitting over there, Mr. Michael Parker. Uh, live life. Live, yeah. Amen. Give it up for him. Amen. Live his life in this place, in this city, and um, not want to go anywhere. And uh, it's it's very inspiring. And I take that with me wherever I go. And um, I hope I inspire, you know, more and more people that look like me. Um, to do things that they never thought that they would do. And that one thing for me was indulging in country music and figuring out um, what I could add to it. And um, some people like to say it's, you know, it's not country. And, um, you know, I'm not who, you know, I think I am, but I, I am a firm believer in God and his plan. And um, he's called me to Nashville, Tennessee. And Nashville, Tennessee has um, accepted me. And so uh, I can't wait to share with you guys what I've been working on. So this first song I'm going to sing is uh, a song that I, I took to my producer and I, I told him I wanted to write a song about my hometown, but I didn't want to say the word, the word hometown in it um, because that's the cliche thing to do in country music is to, you know, talk about back roads and hometowns and beers and all that good stuff, which is great. You know, I'm like, I, I do, I, you know, sing about that stuff sometimes too, but this song, we, we went into the room and we said, let's figure out how to talk about the hometown and let them know that I love them, um, but just not say hometown. So the song is called, um, oh my goodness, how am I forgetting the name of this daggone song? Oh. It's called Live Up To It. Mama was a teacher, daddy meant to be. If we were tired, we never knew it. I bowed her hard, his last name, and I'm just trying to live up to it. I got a good girl, thinks I'm a good girl. She's a mountain, swears I can move it. She's got a light, big good face. An expectation, and now I'm just trying to live up to it. I had a look back on all of my days with all the matter of history, but I will change. If time is money, then we're running out. I want to spend my day in the count, because you never know when that last bit is going to be it. So I want to be to Got a zip code, leave my home home for country music. They're all convinced of saying, they know I hope I live up to it. I want to look back on all of my days Before I'm out of history But I will change If time is money Then we're running out I want to spend my making it count Cause you never know What bad last bird is going to do I want to to 
Oh, my master, I got that good book and I'm working my way through it. Yeah. I'm not perfect, sure, don't deserve it, but I'm trying to live up to you. I look back on all of my days with a whole lot of history, but I will change. If time is money, then we run out. I won't spend my day in a town because you never know when that is what is going to be. So I won't leave. I think I'll, I think I'll be back. Thank you, May. Thank you. Another hand for that. When I was a little kid, well, I was a little kid at one time. Um, my father would wake us up at five o'clock every morning with country music. And I knew them all, Hank Snow and, I, and Hank Williams and Ernest Tubb and all the rest. And when I became a teenager, I tried to put all that stuff, all that stuff behind me because that wasn't cool anymore. But now, thanks to Mike and all those others, country music is back, back with us. Amen. One of the highlights of this evening is the announcement of our 2023 scholarship winners. These bright individuals have shown exceptional dedication and promise, and we're honored to recognize their achievements. To present this esteemed recognition, please join me in welcoming Education Committee member Mike Hammond. Mike. Good evening, everyone. I love the response and callback. It's great. So each year, the NAACP, uh, through the donations of the community members, is able to provide $1,000 scholarships to outstanding students in our high schools. It is the duty of our dedicated scholarship committee to determine the most outstanding individuals to receive these awards. Scholarships are awarded for academic achievement, outstanding citizen citizenship, leadership service, extracurricular activities, minority applicants and applicants who face financial and personal hardships and those who are dedicated to improving their local communities are encouraged to apply. Our scholarship winners have overcome many obstacles in life already to become successful and accomplished students. And we hope our gift will assist them in their journey to attending the college of their choice. The NAACP are glad that we can contribute to the path of success that they have chosen and wish them well in their future endeavors. This year, we selected three outstanding students from 22 applicants. Each of these students are unique, talented, and driven individuals who are, and, and we're excited to be able to help them on their journey to, into higher education. Uh, they are Linda Yemez Irby, 
from Fauquier High School who will attend Laurel Ridge Community College right here to study business administration. Uh, Tanaya Mann from Liberty High School who will attend VCU to study entrepreneurship and business. And Roxanne Del Cid from Kettle Run High School who will attend Laurel Ridge Community College here also to study criminal justice. So we look forward to the opportunity to award scholarships for upcoming for the upcoming class of 2024. We thank those of you who have do donated to the scholarship fund. We thank you in advance to those of you who will donate to the scholarship fund. You make it possible for us to give uh, these students a helping hand and a leg up and we really appreciate it. Thank you all. Are you enjoying yourselves thus far? Yes, yes. Give yourself a round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> From standing here looking out, you all are so beautiful and handsome. It's just a joy to have you all here with us today. Um, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> it is my honor to present two of our local members with certificates of silver membership from the NAACP. As I hold up these plaques, I would like for, I would ask that Sonia Addison and Karen White come forth, please. Apologize. It's on this there on the side. Two beautiful ladies. This certifies that Sonia Addison and Karen White is a member of the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People testifying forever to our faith in the future of all Americans in the United States and in the principles of equality and justice in the American Constitution. In witness thereof, the Board of Directors has caused this certificate to be issued. This silver membership is not just a recognition of past achievements, but a testament to the ongoing dedication to the cause of justice and equity. As we present this certificate, this also acknowledge the responsibilities it carries. It is a reminder to us all, a reminder that the fight of equality is not over. It is a call to action, urging us, us, to continue our efforts to create a society where every individual is treated with dignity and respect regardless of their background. So I will hold up Sonia's plaque for everyone to see. Parents looks the same, they are beautiful. And they also receive, uh, also receive lapel pins. Sonia and Karen, your journey exemplifies the spirit of NAACP. And we are proud to stand alongside you today as we honor your commitment to a better future for all. It is my privilege to present you with this silver membership, Sonia. Thank you, thank you. You wanna turn it around, please? Yes, I will. Yeah. <laughs> and your pen. I'll put this in your hand. Okay. Okay. And to you, Karen, it gives me great honor to also present this to you. And your pen. So if any of the family, or if you want to come up and take pictures with them, uh, why don't you go down and stand in front of the podium, please? 
Let's give them a round of applause, please. Well deserved. Like, could we stand, please, and honor these two women? Because all of us just strive to be members like this. Thank you so much. While the pictures are being taken, I'm going to curve from the program just for a minute. Um, Michelle Shanks has done an awesome job to put this together. And uh, let's give her a round of applause. Sorry. Sorry, but not sorry, Michelle. So would the, uh, the um, banquet committee please stand at this time or wave your hand if you're already standing or just uh, wave your hand, stand up. Uh, without a leader, you really don't know where you're going. Michelle knows where she's going. <laughs> and we followed her as best we could. So, uh, Kami, would you bring me that pink bag, please? The uh, yellow mums outside on the table are for you because your light does shine. <laughs> you're very bright. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Okay, you can give it to her. And in, inside is a candle because you, your spirit shines, you're driven, you're, you're an A, okay? Yeah, you're an A, and that's good. Um, and the candle will also remind you of letting your light shine, this little light, let it shine. So if you don't know Michelle, she'll find a way to get to know you <laughs> and get you involved. But let's give Michelle a round of applause. She deserves her flowers now. Me again. We have uh, the honor to present this year's Fauquier NAACP Distinguished Citizen Award. This year, we are pleased to honor Mr. Raymond E. Duke Bland, Sr. Right. He's a recipient of the 2023 award uh, this, this year. Duke Bland's journey as a devoted member of the Fauquier County Board of Education spanning since 2005 stands as a testament to his unwavering commitment to ensuring every child in our community receives a quality education. His leadership, particularly during the tenure as chairman, has been instrumental in fostering equal opportunities within our schools and eliminating racial discrimination, aligning perfectly with our cause, with the core values of our NAACP. We're especially appreciative of his work and leadership in the memorializing of Dr. William C. Taylor in the new Taylor uh, Middle School um, facility that, that's being planned. So it's an ongoing thing, and we are certainly appreciative of uh, Duke's uh, leadership and, and handling of that and guiding that. Duke's expertise has been the guiding light for the school board especially in the complex realms of construction and maintenance, his dedication to creating a society where every individual enjoys equal rights without prejudice, mirrors the ideals championed by the NAACP. Beyond his professional achievements, Duke's active involvement in various community organizations and exemplifies his genuine love for Fauquier County. His impact reaches far and wide touching the lives of our children and families, shaping the very fabric of our community. 
Today, we celebrate not just a leader, but a beacon of inspiration. Join me in extending our heartfelt congratulations to Mr. Raymond E. Duke Plan Sr., the esteemed recipient of the 2023 Fokker NAACP Distinguished Citizen Award. His legacy of equity, equality, education, and community service will undoubtedly inspire generations to come. Duke Plan comes to the stage. This, this is fancy. Recognition. Recognition Award presented to Raymond E. Duke Bland, Sr., 2023 Distinguished Citizen Service Award, Fokker NAACP. Mr. Bland. Yes, thanks. Nice. This is really nice. Thank you. Now I've got a captive audience. Um, when when I start, when when uh, Mr. Porter called me uh, a couple of weeks ago to, to make sure that I could keep this date and time open, uh, I immediately started uh, to write uh, my remarks, and I misunderstood. I, I thought I had twenty minutes. Miss Fields called me on Friday and says, "No, Duke, it's two minutes. You've got two minutes." So you can imagine all of the, the adjustments I had to make over the last couple of days. But folks, uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is such a huge honor. And I want to thank each and every one of you for recognizing me in this manner. But if I may, uh, I would like to recognize a very special person in my life as well. Uh, my wife of 50 years, Renita. Yeah. You know, it, it has been said that behind every successful man is a woman. But in my case, this woman has not only been behind me, pushing and encouraging me along the way, but rather walking beside me and running beside me and whispering all the time, yes, you can. There are other times when she's just ahead of me with her hand extended and armed with the words slightly above a whisper saying, come on, you've got this. So folks, if you will, please give some love to my lady here. Thank you. Today, I stand proud on the shoulders of many giants who have cut a swath through the thickets of racism social injustice and inequality. The likes of W.E.B. Du Bois, Ida B. Wells, Thurgood Marshall, Dr. Martin Luther King, and modern day leaders like Barack Obama and Kamala Harris, just to name a few. But I would also be remiss if I didn't recognize John F. Kennedy and Brother Robert, who stepped outside of their comfort zone and said, enough is enough. And the pain, they paid an ultimate price for their bravery. All of these folks commanded the national stage, and rightfully so. But for, but for many, their climb to the national stage started in a place very much like this. Maybe not as quite as fancy as this venue, but it started here locally. I remember attending some of the local NAACP, uh, NAACP meetings with my parents and, and extended families back in the late 60s and early 70s when Ms. Mary and Maximilian Tufts led the cause. We are, after all, the legacy of all of those spirited souls. To the Bob Walkers and the Dr. Weavers of the world and the many others who looked out upon us today, Thank you. Chairman Porter and the entire 7059 chapter, thank you for all that you have done. Thank you for all that you are doing. 
and thank you all for all that I know that you will continue to do. You see, our challenges today, in some ways, are much like those of yesteryear. We need you, perhaps uh, more now than ever before. Nobel Prize winner Tony Morrison once said, when the world seems broken, there's no time for despair. There's no place for self-pity, no need for silence, no room for fear. It's time to take action. And many of you all will agree the world today seems broken. Taking action doesn't necessarily mean taking on a monumental task. It doesn't necessarily mean taking on the world when taking on and addressing local issues is indeed the right place to start. You see, you can't start a fire without a spark. The spark of which I speak is the energy right here, right now. You have proven time and time again, taking action yields re results and being patient and persistent years dividends. As a society, as a people, as a community, as a family, we must continue to embrace challenges. Never give in, never give up, make a difference. And in closing, Dr. Janetta Cole, she's a past president of Spelman College, and this is one of my favorite sayings. She said, we are different. We are for difference, for respecting difference, for allowing difference, for encouraging difference until difference no longer makes a difference. Again, I thank you for this honor. Thank you. I thank you for this honor. Uh, it really means so much to me and my family. And my fellow officers who will be running uh, for election this year, you can make a difference. Mike, thanks for all you do. Everybody, you, are, you can make a difference. So let it start here. It starts locally, folks. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Mr. Conway said that Mr. Porter said he wanted to say instead of me. Is that it? So low you can't hear. No, Mr. Porter, I got you. I'll uh, I'll handle this. I got it. <laughs> Amen. Okay, uh, I was going to sing the song that I just released um, on Friday, but I, I just want to, I want to sing what's on my heart, and um, yeah, God's putting this on my heart to sing, to sing this one, and um, yeah, I wrote this again about just my my friends here in, in my hometown, and uh the song means a lot to me, and it's called People Change. It's not out yet. Uh, can't get it anywhere, so you guys are going to be the only ones to hear it. So hmm. the song is called People Change. The yellow house in the cul-de-sac, the one in the back. 
I could get the world my eyes closed. Your eyes don't just want to cry. Coop would look up, tell me, God, and my head was And we still talk every once in a while. But then it's been a while. Because people change, they grow up. They fall down, they fall in and out of me. And every day, something new, safe to say, it's the only truth. Just like the seasons do, people change. First hit a life and at 16, saw the rest of your life, and you believed it too. Mm -hmm. 19, so the story goes, you found a dream, so you hit the road. That girl's his body. And now that's the self it's been again. People change, they grow up, they fall down, they fall in and out of me. Every day, something new, safe to say, it's the only truth. Just like the seasons do, people change, change, change. It's never the same, 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 and it's okay. People change, they grow up, they fall down, they fall in and out of the man. <laughs> And every day, something new, safe to say, it's the only truth. Just like the seasons do, people change. Thank you guys so much. That was people change. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you to this chapter so much for having me. You guys are amazing. I love you. Hello, everyone. Are you guys enjoying yourselves? Good, 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 good. I will not be singing. Um, but thank you so much, Mike, for that wonderful, for those two selections. They were so powerful. I don't know about you guys, but when he hit some of them notes, I got chills. I, I just, you know, I just felt the energy coming through him. So thank you so much. I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be up here to do a, a keynote introduction, but I'm just still very full of the energy that's in this room. So I hope you all are very full of the energy that's in this room. Um, it is my pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker for this afternoon. Dr. Sharnia Artis, PhD, is the Vice President of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion and Chief Diversity Officer at George Mason University. Dr. Artis has over 20 years of higher education experience conducting research and advancing programs and services to be inclusive of marginalized communities. In her current role, she plans, guides, and advises Mason's leadership on affirmative action matters and inclusive excellent activities and works to enhance and embed these values into all aspects of the university operations. Dr. Artis is a university affiliate faculty in the College of Engineering and Computing with research and teaching interests centered on the use of socio-technical systems to improve inclusion in STEM fields. She has authored or co-authored over 50 reference manuscripts in technical journals, book chapters, and conference proceedings, and received over $10 million in funding to support her work. 
Dr. Artis is a graduate of Virginia Tech, receiving her BS, MS, and PhD in Industrial and Systems Engineering and serving as president of Virginia Tech's NAACP chapter. She is also a proud wife, mother of two beautiful children, daughter, sister, friend, and mentor. During her spare time, I don't know where she gets it, she enjoys traveling, writing, and exploring different cultures. Please welcome our speaker, Dr. Sharnia Artis. Set my timer over here. On the Make sure I stay on time. All right. Well, I think I'll hold a mic. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. All right. Um, Michelle, I'm feeling like you. Just full of energy, spirit filled, and um, I'm very passionate about the NAACP. So I want to like bring my inner spirit down a little bit because I don't want to, you know, I know some of y'all already been to church and I feel like I'm kind of at church at a banquet. Um, Mike Parker, people change. Where are you? Where'd you go? Thank you. That that was something I didn't know I needed to have. So I appreciate I appreciate you doing that. Um, it's such a blessing and honor to be with, with you all today. Before I start, I want to thank the executive committee and standing committees for their leadership. I want to thank Michelle and her planning committee or the banquet committee for their organization and hard work to make this 68th annual, which is wow, 68th annual freedom fun banquet happened. Thank you. And I want to, let's get them another round of applause. Um, I also, although they're not here, I definitely want to give a special congratulations to the scholarship recipients as well. Um, because I was a, a NAACP scholarship recipient myself, um, when I was in high school and college. And so I'm going to just start by saying I'm here today because of events like the Freedom Fund Banquet, which helps to raise funds for scholarships for higher education. I grew up in Chesapeake, Virginia, about three hours southeast from here. And I remember being active in our local NAACP chapter, um, our youth chapter. I, mem I remember participating in voter registration events. I, I remember participating in college admissions and preparation activities. And a lot of that in activity and engagement led to me receiving the NAACP Agnes Jones Jackson Scholarship, one of the national scholarships, um, which is still, they have that today, which is incredible. Um, but that allowed me to attend Virginia Tech where I was an active member of our uh, Virginia Tech chapter of the NAACP, the collegiate chapter, and served as the chapter president. So I felt like this was like a homecoming. I haven't been to, I've been to a couple of um, Freedom Fund banquets this year, but this one just felt very special as I was driving in and walking in and seeing so many people from so many backgrounds. And so I just want to say thank you for just having this type of event in the community. I know you all are, are know the NAACP mission, but I just want to say it again because I think it's important, and I'm going to speak to it a bit. But NAACP mission is to secure the political, educational, social, and economic equality of rights in order to eliminate race-based discrimination and ensure the health and well-being of all persons. And so today I want to share some experiences from an educational perspective. Um, Duke Bland, who, who received the Distinguished uh, Citizen Service Award, you talked about making a difference. And so I'm hoping that what I'll talk about is some steps in making a difference. Uh, Mike's saying about people changing, and I want to talk about uh, how we can make change happen, and you all are already doing that. Um, I was thinking about 
my who inspires me for for what I want to share today and it was the honorable John Lewis um I know many of you probably know who he is um an American politician and civil rights activist who served in the United States House of Representatives for Georgia's 5th Congressional District from 1987 um, until his death in 2020. The Honorable John Lewis understood the significance of bold action in the pursuit of justice. He said, when you see something that is not right, not fair, not just, you have to speak up. You have to say something, you have to do something. These words are calls, a call to action, a reminder that change does not happen on its own. It requires the courage to confront injustice. And so for our time today, um, I want to focus on three, three messages. We have a voice, we can be heard, and change can happen. And so I'm going to start with a story from Blacksburg, Virginia, uh, when I was a student there. And it, and it really, for me, was a testament to the power and determinate, of determination and advocacy. So I learned that I had a voice. It was in the late 1990s. Virginia Tech was a campus where the voices of students, particularly those belonging to underrepresented communities, needed to be heard. Through the NAACP chapter and other student groups, I was a young advocate for change, and I recognized the importance of our voice in a place where dialogue was critical. Having a voice allowed us to express our desires, concerns, and disappointment with our institution requiring us to attend classes on the observance of Dr. Martin Luther King's birthday. And this was the late 90s. Um, I'm not that old. So, you know, I was not born during the civil rights time. <laughs> um, and it was a federally recognized holiday. And I want to incorporate a, a, a history lesson here. So, Martin Luther King Day birthday was federally recognized in 1983 under President Ronald Reagan. During this time, the Commonwealth of Virginia merged this holiday with the existing Lee Jackson Day. Some of you may remember that that was on the Friday before Martin Luther King's birthday um, to celebrate Confederate generals uh, Lee and Jackson who had fought to prolong slavery during the American Civil War. Um, I'm an engineer, I'm a critical thinker, so immediately in my mind I think, wow, how ironic is that? And also, how polarizing to celebrate the three of them on one day. It was in 1983, so you know I was really young then, not quite uh, activating my activism yet. Uh, but, this, but this day, again, Friday, immediately before Martin Luther King's observed holiday. Then in 2000, under Governor Jim Gilmore, this merger uh, was reversed. And it actually is the, at the time where Martin Luther King's birthday observed became his own holiday on that Monday. Um, in 2020, Lee Jackson Day observation was eliminated and replaced by election day as, state, as a state holiday. So I just wanna give y'all that. So yeah, clap for that. Absolutely clap for that. All right, so some of you may be thinking, just take the day off. So I was a student, um, just take the day off. It's okay to miss a class. And in fact, you're right. It is okay, I missed many classes during my time at Virginia Tech. But on this particular day, Martin Luther King Day, um, the observance that Monday was always our first day of the semester. And at Virginia Tech, there was a rule where if you missed the first day of class, you would get dropped from your classes. Um, and what that would mean for an individual like me, if I wanted to take that day off, being dropped from a class might have meant that you wouldn't be able to get into that class until the summertime or the next semester. It may put you behind in the, the, the curriculum that's set up for you. It may even mean another year or another semester added to your four, five, six, however many years you're gonna be in Virginia Tech to get your degree. And what that would do is really create um, inequity, not just inequity financially. If you wanted to take that day off, uh, you would have probably had to pay some extra money because you wouldn't finish in that four or five year plan that you had. But also inequities in graduation rates. For some people, financially, um, they have to leave the institution because they can't afford it. So just that 
simple not giving the day off um, was something that have created inequities for many students. For me and the students that were in the NAACP, um, we embarked on a journey. And this is a journey that I feel like I've, I've had uh, many times in my career, but we began to engage in open conversations with, our, with other students, with faculty, staff, administrators, striving to create a platform where every voice could be heard. We organized with other groups, uh, we partnered with the Black Caucus at Virginia Tech, other local chapters in the area to have meetings and organize rallies, making sure that the message could not be ignored. We understood that being heard was the bridge between having a voice and creating change. And change can happen. The culmination of these efforts was, was nothing short of remarkable. There were a lot of things that had to come in place um, I don't know if things really had, a lot of things really had to happen, but a lot of things did happen for, for the result to be Virginia Tech to create it as a holiday. But in 2001, the university heard the students who had a voice and they knew they could be heard. And they ended up not having class on that Monday. And so classes ca classes were canceled on that Monday. But it wasn't until 2008 when the president said, we're not gonna just cancel class. We're gonna make, we're gonna observe MLK, Dr. MLK's birthday on that Monday as well. So it's not just no class, it is a holiday for the university. And so you can do something to celebrate his legacy if that's what you choose on that day. And I mean, that took 10 years to happen. I wasn't there for when it became a holiday but what I learned is that change takes time. Y'all know that, right? And that you may not see the change happen, but you're a part of the change. And in increments, if generations keep coming behind you, the things that you're working towards, you may not see it, but that next generation or that generation after them will be able to see it. And so change can happen. Um, and so now what I wanna do is, is shift a bit. So that was my story for Virginia Tech. And it really does serve as a beacon of hope and inspiration for me when I think about change and, and things, the work that I do at George Mason. Um, I'm often reminded that having a voice is the first step, but it's the collective effort and the belief that we can be heard that leads to, the, to change. And so fast forward about 20 years, I'm, I'm, I'm at another institution in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Um, I'm now at George Mason University, which is about 30 miles east of here. Um, before I tell my George Mason story, I got to just highlight George Mason. We're the largest, uh, largest four-year institution in the Commonwealth. Uh, we got 40,000 students. This year, we enrolled 40,000 students. And that is a big deal. It sounds like a lot of students. Um, while we do have all these students, 40,000 students, our students are all excelling, excelling at the same level. Um, they're graduating at the same rate. Um, they are succeeding because of the support that we provide. Uh, we may continue to increase enrollment, but we also continue to maintain a 16 to one faculty student, excuse me, 16 to one student faculty ratio um, because we know the importance that, of support and the support that our students need to um, achieve success and go into the workforce and do great things. This year we were ranked number one for social mobility. And not only are we the largest institution, but being ranked for number one for social mobility, we have about one third of our students that are first generation, um, uh, about 25% of them are also uh, low income students. But what it means to be number one for social mobility is that we get to change these students' um, socioeconomic status. And when you're talking about making change happen, that is an important opportunity that higher education gives the students that we serve. So that's my plug for George Mason U University. It's a great institution. I'm so proud and happy to be here and be at George Mason. Before I came, I came to George Mason in 2020. No, I didn't. 2021, two years ago. Um, I came to George Mason in 2021, and when I came, I, I really, I came from California, so I lived in California for the last 10 years, and coming back to Virginia was a hard decision, 
Um, I got those two little ones. One of them is five. My daughter, Skylar. My husband, born and raised in L.A., and he thinks L.A. is his own country. Um, but that's a, a different story. And then I have a, a one-year-old. So it was a big move to kind of to come back to Virginia. And But what made me come is because of George Mason's commitment to diversity and making sure that all students succeed regardless of where they come from and who they are. It was just a real mission and vision for everyone to have access. And so I came in 2021. I was attracted because they want everyone to succeed regardless of the background. Um, they had a president and have a president, Dr. Uh, Dr. Gregory Washington. He's the eighth president of George Mason University. He's also the first black president of George Mason University. And when he came, he came in 2020. And y'all remember what was going on in 2020. I'm gonna say he started July, 2020. I like to say it's two, it was two pandemics going on, not just COVID, but also the racial injustices that were taking place um, and that have been taking place. But just now, you know, people can see what we were seeing for the last decades. Um, and during his first month, the students were protesting on George Mason campus. They wanted to take down the statue for George Mason. We didn't take down the statue. But what did happen is that those students had a voice. They had a voice. Um, and these, these students, there were students, there were faculty, there were staff, they had a voice. And President Washington um, heard them. He created a task force, the Anti-Racism and Inclusive Excellence Task Force, and that comprised of over 150 stakeholders. There were students, faculty, staff, community members that joined. And the purpose of that task force was to address systemic racism and promote a culture of inclusivity and equity on campus. These 150 people knew that they had a voice. They understood their assignment and they couldn't remain silent in face of racial disparities and injustice in higher education. They knew they had a duty to stand up and make a difference and they advocated for change and they were heard those individuals this was before i came to george mason they worked together for over 18 months looking at data interviewing individuals learning about different people experiences um talking to alumni to understand what type of change needed to happen and as a result they came up with 60, over 60 actionable recommendations initiatives aimed at dismantling racial disparities and fostering a truly inclusive academic environment. Their efforts spanned across various aspects of the university from curriculum enhancement, professional development to hiring practices and their voices weren't just heard, they were embraced. It, they were embraced by the Mason community. Um, their collective voice resonated while they were the ones leading the task force, but their collective voice resonated throughout the entire university. Um, and their unwavering commitment to addressing racial inequities gained the attention and support it deserved. And so I talked about, we have a voice, we can be heard. And I'm gonna give you another example that change can happen. Their dedication and passion um, I've been at Mason now for two years and I've seen change happen for them, but this is work of decades of work that those individuals had put in. President Washington committed and invested $5 million over three years to get some of those recommendations off the ground and going. In the last three years, when one of them was to hire some hire individuals to, to have an infrastructure where they can embed inclusive inclusive excellence, inclusivity in their policies and their practices and their processes. And so they've been able to create an infrastructure. They've been able to hire personnel. Uh, we've hired individuals with expertise in trauma-informed and um, inclusive expertise in areas of counseling, health equity, uh, curriculum development. We've also invested in our students to provide them more support. Uh, they have opportunities to participate in conferences to develop their skill sets and cultural competencies, as well as research. Um, and, and the purpose of that is to help them be prepared for where they're going next when they leave Mason to have that cultural competency so they can do great things in this world that we live in. And so I want to wrap up talking about um, affirming the voice. So I have a voice. You have a voice. 
It's great to see a lot of you that are running for election because you all have a voice as well. Everyone in here has a voice. And I want to just encourage you to use your voice. Oftentimes you think that it's just me. It's one person. One person voice matters. And once you start connecting with other people, I mean, this is a whole community here. Your voice matters. Collectively, your voice matters. We can be heard. There is power in the collective voice, and we should take advantage of it. You can use your voice in meetings, organize rallies and protests, social media, ledger, letters to legislators and decision makers. You can be heard. And the last thing, change can happen. When voices unite with determination and purpose, we can make change happen. We can see change in our community, in the education system, in the criminal justice system, in the healthcare system, in housing, in housing finance, in employment and wages, in financial systems, political systems, environmental justice, media, entertainment, that list can go on. But we can see change happen. And, and we collectively are the driving force for that transformation. We have a voice, we can be heard. Each of you are a source of inspiration. As in, as, and as we continue to work towards a better, more equitable society where we eliminate race-based discrimination, ensure the health and well-being of all persons, let's continue to make change happen. Thank you. Mike, could you join us up on stage as well? <laughs> So I just want to thank you all for being in attendance and for being witness to the voices and the talents that have been shared um, today. Um, I wanted to, um, these two people, I, I reached out to them and they were, they were absolutely willing and able and they were like, just give me the details and we'll be there. So we are so appreciative um, to have them with us, especially, I don't know, if you guys don't follow Mike on social media, he's on Instagram, Michael Parker, Mike Parker Music, okay, on IG, follow him uh, for sure. Um, follow him, he is, I, I, we're lucky to have him. I don't know if y'all know this, but this man's about to blow up, okay? He is about to blow up. Okay. And um, this woman here is very busy, I am sure, keeping George Mason straight and keeping them on task. Um, so I, I, we are just so pleased to have them. So I have a couple of gifts. The first one is for Mike. Mike, I know you're a hat wearer and I think you need some new hats. Um, just to remember, just to remember Virginia. So we got a Virginia hat. Oh my God. Okay. Virginia. So, okay. And then we have a Fauquier hat. Okay. 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 And it tells you how to pronounce Fauquier. You know, so when people ask you where you're from, you can tell them Fauquier. Okay. And then, um, and then I have this certificate here of appreciation. And then this may be a shirt that you may or may not wear out in public. I don't know, but it's, it's, um, I'll wear it all. I'll wear it all. and it's, uh, it's from old Busthead, and it's a little tongue in cheek. So, you know, if you know about old Busthead and these t-shirts, you know what they say, it says eat here, drink here, fuck here. Okay. <laughs> so you can wear that out in Tennessee. <laughs> okay, and I can't, I have to, we have to be gifty as well. So, um, I know you're from uh, lower Virginia and we'll excuse that. Now you're in Northern Virginia. So, um, I got you a couple books. Um, and if you guys, these, uh, we have to, ha we have to create a uh, black history book. I know we have the Afro-American with, with Karen White, and I know you have these books, I am sure. So go find these books, okay? This one is the Images of America, African-Americans of Fauquier County. 
okay? So she can learn about the black history and Fauquier. And then I had the privilege of knowing this gentleman who died at the young age of 106 years old, um, Dr. Uh, Reverend Alfonso Washington. This is his memoirs, All in God's Time. And it talks about his growing up in Fauquier County and some of the things that happened. So get yourself a copy of these. I don't get any money from y'all buying these. So just, you know, get, get out and get yourself a copy if you have time. And then have the shirt too okay. so you can go yeah. and represent talk here okay and then handle in there and the certificate thank as well so, so thank you exactly thank so you thank give them a hand So this is not part of the script or the program, but I just thought it would not be a, a missed opportunity if we did not acknowledge the year that our branch has had this year. Um, as many of you know, we lost our president, Dr. Weaver, um, earlier in the year, and his widow is here with us, Turin Weaver. And so if you have not seen her and hugged her, please do so. Um, our program, um, if you watch the um, preview with the songs and the video was dedicated to Dr. Weaver. And also this year, we renamed um, our scholarships um, in Dr. Weaver's honor, and he was a vast proponent of education. Um, and so we, it just feels like, you know, our unofficial theme has been education and, and what that does for the community and how that manifests into other areas. So um, just wanted to acknowledge that. Um, when we did lose Dr. Weaver, um, we were without a shepherd. And so our year has looked a little different this year, but um, I am so pleased that Conway stepped up to be president once again. He was our president several years ago, and he um, jumped right back in and found his uh, swimming legs and just has been steering our ship. And so thank you so very much. And I also want to um, acknowledge our vice president. When we started the year, we had not elected a vice president. And uh, Robin stepped up, Robin Fields, who was our membership chair at the time, stepped up. And she was like, I'll, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'll do it. And she has been doing a fabulous job. So just thank both of them for just stepping up as we are recovering from our year. So. I'm gonna turn it back over. Oh, I just wanted to say, I made a few notes um, here as well. And I just wanted to, um, to the, some of the, the, the themes that are coming from this, that people change and change takes time. And so um, just carry those words with you um, when you go out from, we're not quite over yet, but when you leave today. Um, President Porter. <laughs> That's a hand for Michelle. She is the driving wheel here. Let me tell you. Next one. Um, I want to recognize a few people here, but um, just wanted to say, Dr. Artis, um, that delicious irony you spoke of uh, with the Lee Jackson day, you know. I grew up with that, and I found I found like a middle ground, something that you could ex accept. And instead of Stonewall and General Robert E., I said, "Well, let's celebrate Stagger Lee and Mahalia Jackson." How about that? So, so you know, kids kids have a way of you know. Thinking of things, okay. Tonight's event would not have been possible without each of you and the support of our generous partners. 
Their commitment to our mission and our community is truly commendable. The money raised during this event helps our local chapter continue to do community outreach, hold homeowner and tenant forms, work with local health organizations and provide resources, support the education of the next generation with scholarships and many future projects. Please join me in acknowledging and thanking our partners, you and our partners, for their invaluable contributions and I'm going to list our partners here. The ally, in the ally division, we have Fork Your Moms Demand Action. Do we have people? Fork Your Moms Demand Action. Now, these are our financial partners. I mean, they, you know, they came with the corner of the realm, so we're, we're certainly appreciative. Uh, Kathy Marmot. Kathy, you here? Okay. And Judy Lamana. For in our advocate uh, category, we have Century 21 New Millennium. Uh, do we have that? anyone in the house? There we go. Papa Fork Baptist Church. Raise your hand there. Hey. Black Lives Matter, Vigil for Actions, Cat in the house. Evanese of Baptist Church. Uh, League of Women Voters, Prince William and Fauquier County. In the Guardian category, we have um, Country Chevrolet. Where are you, Country Chevrolet? Are you here? No. Okay. Uh, and in champion in the champion category, we have the Fauquier County Democratic Committee, and they have table, they have a table outside in Oakville National Bank. Where are you, Oakville? Right in the back. Hmm. Oh, uh, uh, and also Remington Press in the Guardian. Uh, Remington Press. Right On your tables, you will notice a couple of QR codes. Our work here only continues with the support of our community. And there are a couple of ways. Yes, oh, okay. And there are a couple of ways you can help show your support. You can start your membership with the NAACP today and give your time and talents. We have many ways to get involved from our education and health committees to our religious affairs to support the annual Juneteenth celebration. As you may have seen in the hallway, we have committee tables for NAACP membership and NAACP political action. Robin Fields and Nick Burns will be happy to answer any questions you may have in this regard. Another way you can show your support is through a donation. Donations can be made using the QR code, which takes you to our donation pages on our website. If you would like to make a donation by check, please see Chuck Brokers. Chuck, raise your hand there. Man with the green shirt. Our treasurer or Nick Burns. Raise your hand, Nick, back in the back. And uh, you can do that after our event, and they'd be happy to assist you. Um, I was I was honored to um, to be chosen to lead this um, lead this group, um, and I was after if you, if ever you have served as a president or head of anything, after it's over you do that, and you're going back to the back bench and let everything sort of wash over you, you know. And uh, that's where I was uh, when when uh, Dr. Uh, Weaver uh, left us, you know, and um, I'm just, I want to thank NAACP for putting up with me. They probably need, you know, probably need a reward, but I really, it, it's been an honor. It's something about leadership. Um, some very wise person told, uh, 
wrote that leadership is like a bunch of ants floating down the river on a log. And they choose one ant to determine which way the log is going to go. So, you know, I'm on this log, but I'm telling you the truth that my leadership has been, the, the success of this organization has depended on the members, our committees, and all of the various people that pitch in and do the work of this organization. And so we want to thank you. Um, before we close, let's, um, okay. Yeah, before we close, let's take a moment and reflect and be thankful. I would like to give you thanks to our caterer, Court's Kitchen, and our cookie flavor maker. Court's Kitchen, how was the food, everybody? And the flavor maker is treats and sweets for you. And I think that's the cookies. Is that right? Yeah, the cookies there. Um, this is a this, these are two women owned businesses. After three years of having this event virtually due to the pandemic, we are so pleased to be back in person again. And this would not be possible without the work of our Freedom Fund Committee members. Freedom Fund Committee members, do we recognize them already? We have to recognize them already, right? All right, let's recognize them again. Nick Burns. Dean Penley, where are you, Dean? Okay, Dean Penley, Bob Copeland, Chuck Wilkers, Robin Fields, myself, and our chair, Michelle Shanks. The great Michelle Shanks. And we thank you to Laurel Ridge Community College for their support and staff as well. This is a this has been a beautiful venue. First time we've been here, but it's you know we really it's excellent. And please give everyone along with yourself a round of applause, please. Let us remember the power of unity, the strength of knowledge, and the beauty of collected aspirations. May we carry the spirit with us as we step back into the world, inspired and rejuvenated. Now, to close out, we think it's only appropriate to end with the Black National Anthem. Please stand and join us in singing, lift every voice and sing. <laughs>
Safe travel home. Is that what is that food or what you're talking about? If you'd like any leftovers, they have been boxed in the hallway. It's going to be first come, first serve. Thank you all. <laughs>